Today, we rebuild Boca Juniors. With the announcement that Carlos Tevez is retiring at the end of this season, it feels like the perfect time to rebuild the Argentinian club. And to make things a little more personal to Tevez himself, we are only allowed to sign players that Carlos Tevez has played for in real life and also if they are Argentinian. So the teams we are allowed to sign players from are Corinthians, West Ham United, Manchester United, Manchester City, Juventus and Shanghai Shanwa. And of course, like I've just mentioned, if they are Argentinian. And taking into account that Tevez found a lot of success in the Premier League with Manchester United and Manchester City, we are slotting Boca Juniors in the Premier League. If you guys go on to enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like, smash the hello to that subscribe button, turn that notification bell on so you never miss a video that I upload. And at the time we're recording this, we are still on the road to 4,000 subscribers. Let's have one final push to get that goal. Also, the like goal for this video, let's go big and bold for our buddy Carlos Tevez. Let's go for 310 likes. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have yet to see one of my rebuild videos before here are the rules the main objective of this rebuild is to win the champions league i can make any transfers that i want making it as realistic as possible all games have to be simulated but the champions league final has to be played now that you know how this works strap yourselves in and enjoy the video so we do begin our journey with Boca juniors with just over 13 million and as i've already said we are only allowed to buy players from teams carlos tevez has played for in his career and obviously if they are argentine but aside from that the one thing that I spotted more than anything was the back four's age is average 30s. There is some very good talent in this team, however. We've got Rossi, who we know for a fact is an absolute gold man in this game. We have the 19-year-old centre-back Avila, who I'm very excited about. We have the boy Salvio. I can't lie, this guy seems like he's been football forever. In this rebuild, I don't want to mess around with too many things in Boca Junior system, and for that reason, we are sticking with the 4-1-4-1 formation. But it's definitely a long road to winning the Champions League. And we have made our very first signing of this rebuild, stealing away Ben Johnson from West Ham for just 4.3 million. Meanwhile, we have just sent out Alan Varela on a one-year loan move. We have also just sent out Christian Medina on a two-year loan move, as well as Gaston Avia for a two-year loan move to Trabzonspor as well. We're pretty much stealing West Ham's defensive lineup at this minute in time we have just secured Issa Diop for 15.4 million and after that transfer and this is the team that we are rocking with going into our very first season with Boca Juniors there's a shit ton of improvement to happen in this squad I won't sugarcoat it at this moment in time this team is nowhere near the quality we needed to be but give us two or three seasons we will be competing for the top six I put my money on it but for now I would be so goddamn happy for a mid-table finish while we're at the midway point this season and we are literally just above the relegation zone we are five points clear of 18th place crystal palace this i'm not gonna lie i thought we'd do a little bit better than this at the midway point but at least we're not in the relegation zone that's all i can take from this literally in this transfer window we need to make something happen otherwise this is going to be a very very long season so we do begin this transfer window by selling on Marcus Rojo for 7.2 million. And we have officially stolen our very first player from Manchester United. We bought Fred for 18 million. And this is the team after that transfer window. There's a little bit of improvement here and there. Rossi's 80 rated now. It's a Diop 79 rated. Fred, obviously, one of the best signs we could have possibly done, in my opinion. We've got Johnson at that right back position who's gone up to 74 rated. Hopefully, by the end of this season, he's looking at 77 rated. That, for me, would be a massive dub for him. But honestly, I think being in the bottom five of the Premier League with this team it's slightly disappointing I think we can do a little bit better than this hopefully by the end of this season we will be maybe 14th 13th place so we have finished this season 14th in the league I'm actually pretty happy with that considering at the midway point we were in a bit of trouble finishing 14th place in the Premier League is a very respectable position to finish in the first season of this rebuild in my opinion it can only get better from this providing of course we can make some really good signings next season Meanwhile, in the FA Cup, it was Southampton who beat Chelsea who to win it. Fair goddamn play. Manchester City won the Carabao Cup. Frank Fur beat the bottle jobs to win the Europa Conference League. Go on, the boys. Real Sociedad pulled off a mad upset to win the Europa League by beating Liverpool 1-0. And it was Manchester City this time who won the Champions League. I'll be honest with you guys, I wasn't expecting much at all from the stats, and I wasn't wrong. Sebastian Villa, however, did do pretty well. 17 goals, 4 assists from that winger position. That's not bad at all. Benedetto did prove to us why we do you need to look for a new striker next season. 
I'm very aware that we have got Luis Vasquez, but I want to send him out on loan as soon as I possibly can because I don't think he's going to get the proper game time in this team. But in total honesty, the first season, it was about a 6 out of 10 at best. We definitely need to improve this squad massively next season or we are definitely in danger of getting relegated. So we do start season 2 with just over 25 million. The one thing that is screaming to me about this team that needs improvement is still the defence. The midfield actually looks pretty solid for the time being. The striker will definitely be the next thing I do after bringing in a centre back. But Escaderos is 74 rated now. He is getting on a little bit and he will start to decline a lot more as the season progresses. So our main priority this transfer window is bringing in a brand new centre back. And we have brought in our very first purchase of this transfer window. We have brought in Marcos Sanessi, the Argentinian centre back, cost us 19 million. Meanwhile, we have just gone and sold Juan Ramirez for just under 5 million. And after that transfer winner, this is how we got the team lining up for the second season in the Premier League. Now, Benedetto has gone down to 75 rated overall. So in the next transfer window, our main priority is going to be getting a replacement striker because I'm telling you now, he isn't going to last much longer in this team. As well as that, unfortunately, Ben Johnson has picked up an injury, putting him out for five months of this season, which is a massive blow. And it's quite unfortunate because he was beginning to steadily improve as well. But if you actually take a look at the team itself, that is a far cry from where we were this time last season we have improved so goddamn much and hopefully by the midway point this season we'll be nowhere near the relegation zone oh this is gonna take longer than i thought it was going to we are currently sat 17th we're only outside of the relegation zone because of our goal difference otherwise we'd probably be 18th this is appalling man this is actually appalling we need to do something in this transfer window. we need to do something drastic otherwise there's a good chance we might get relegated so we did agree to let go of melina after the transfer ended for about 4.9 million. We have also decided to sell Jorman Camposano for just under 8 million. Meanwhile, we have just sent out Marcel Weigant on a short-term loan move to Newcastle United. We've also just sent out Augustin Sanders on a short-term loan due to Mallorca as well. We have just brought in probably the most important signing we could have made this transfer window. We have brought in the Argentinian striker Facundo Farias for 25 million. Yet another very important transfer we've just made. We've brought in fullback Nicolas Tagliafico for 17 million. And this is how we got the team lining up after that transfer window. The new and improved squad. And I must admit, it's looking pretty promising going into the second half of this season. I'm hoping to God that somehow, some way, we can find some form at least, pick up some wins and get a higher play place in freaking 17th because I'm sick and tired of seeing us at 17th place when this team should be a hell of a lot higher in the league. It has been a bad season this time for Boca Juniors. We legitimately just escaped relegation by one freaking point. Something needs to change next season. I don't know what the hell has gone wrong this season, but it cannot happen again. Let me get something straight, right? We were absolutely pants in the Premier League, yet we get to the final of the FA Cup. Explain to me how that works. Manchester City ended up winning the Carabao Cup once again. Atalanta beat the bottle jobs to win the Europa Conference League. Bayern Munich won the Europa League. And it was Manchester City who won the Champions League. I can't believe how badly we'd on this season it's not even a joke at this point that has got to be the worst season i've ever had doing this rebuild series and i refuse to let that happen again this season we start with just over 23 million i think we can all agree we've done as much as we possibly can with the defense with the money that we've got so what we are going to do we're going to focus more on that central midfield the position smack bang in the middle of the park fernandez i think we need to upgrade him this signing is huge. We have just brought in M. Ray Chan for 24.2 million. And this is the team we're taking into season three. Now, if we aren't anywhere near that bottom three at the midway point this season with this freaking team, I'm genuinely going to be clueless on where to go next because obviously there is still some improvements to be made, but this team should be absolutely nowhere near the bottom half. It's about goddamn time as well. Finally, some goddamn progression. We are currently top four at the midway point this season and we are in tremendous company manchester city liverpool chelsea manchester united arsenal is seventh which i love to see and spurs wherever spurs spurs are 14th beautiful stuff all jokes aside though thank god for that i was beginning to lose hope 
We didn't do anything in that transfer window purely because we just couldn't afford to bring anybody in from West Ham, Man United, Juve, Man City, all the teams that Tevez has played for in his illustrious career. And I really didn't want to bring in any more Argentinians just yet because I've been so heavily reliant on them in the past couple of seasons. So I just didn't do anything. But this is how we got the team lining up. And I must admit, this team is definitely worthy of top six football. As well as that, we do have Salvio retiring at the end of this season. So next season, without a shadow of a doubt, we have got to get a brand new winger. But something tells me after this season, we won't have any issues with money going forward. We were so goddamn close, guys. We were so close to top six, but it doesn't matter. It is a damn good improvement from 17th place last season. We've literally jumped 10 places in the span of one season. That, in my opinion, is very good improvement. Hopefully next season, we can break into the top six and then even the top four if we're lucky. Meanwhile, it was Man City who won the FA Cup. Bloody Reading of all teams won the Carabao. Oh, cut fair play. Napoli won the Europa Conference League. Lazio won the Europa League. And once again, Manchester City won the Champions League. Farius was certainly a good purchase for us last season, and he came in pretty clutch this time. 19 goals, 5 assists. Farius is a brilliant player. 83 rated, 21 years old, but his stats, for me personally, aren't as good as his rating. I think this guy next season needs to break into at least 25 goals before I start getting impressed by him. However, Emre Chan, 14 goals, 8 assists from the centre midfielder position. I am impressed with that. I'm very impressed with that. Sebastian Villa, fair play. He keeps averaging 14, 15 goals a season. I've got to applaud the consistency. And it is time to say goodbye to Eduardo Salvio. He has been around for as long as I can goddamn remember. So we are finally saying goodbye to him next season. I've got a pretty good idea who I'm going to replace him with. But for all I know, I might not be able to get this player in question because he swapped teams. But either way, I reckon we're going to have a little bit more money to work with next season, which is beautiful. This season we begin with just over 42 million. Now, like I said, last season Salvio did end up retiring, so we do have to buy a winger. And I think what we are going to do as well is buy another keeper because I've just realised we haven't even got a second keeper. And we have got the man we wanted. We have got Matias Sula, the right winger from Argentina, also plays for Juventus, and he cost us 23 million. We have found our backup keeper in the American Zach Stefan, and we bought him for 16 million. And after that transfer window has come to a conclusion, this is how we got the team lining up. Sula has slotted straight in to that start in 11 side which is exactly what I wanted. I think the next course of action will be getting another centre midfielder Romero whilst he is pretty decent he's 32 years old which will mean he will start to decline pretty soon. Weigand I've got a little bit of faith that he can still improve quite significantly that's why I've left him alone for a little bit he's still only 24 years old he's done well so far so I'm going to leave him alone but if you take a look at the squad it's improved every single goddamn season without fail and that is exactly what I want to see. But if I'm being honest my expectations this season are definitely definitely higher I am expecting to qualify for European football for next season. So we have reached the midway point this season and we are once again fourth place only by a goal difference though Palace are very close behind us. Personally though I'm not asked about where we finish as long as we get some kind of European football for next season. This is becoming increasingly difficult to bring in players because there's only a certain amount of players we're actually allowed to sign considering the stipulations I set for this video. And with 20 million pound in the bank there's not really much you can get especially at this point in the game. So this is how we got the team lining up going into the second half of the season, but I've got full confidence in this team to get us European football for next season. So we have finally reached the end of the season, and finally we have broken into that top six. Thank God for that. We genuinely have improved so much since two seasons ago. Meanwhile, it was Leicester City who won the FA Cup. West Ham pulled off a mad upset beating Manchester City to win the Carabao Cup. Wolfsburg won the Europa Conference League. Roma won the Europa League. And this time it was Liverpool who won the Champions League. For Rice, considering his overall, he needs to be bagging more goals than 19. He needs to be hitting 25 plus a season at least. Fair play to Sebastian Villa though. Freaking hell fire. 16 goals, 4 assists. He's been so consistent with these goals season in, season out. Sula from the wing is 14 goals, 2 assists. Not bad, I suppose. And Emre Chan, 10 goals, 10 assists. Absolute all of this guy is honest to god i love this guy on career mode i would say that this season is a massive win personally because we did reach the top six and that's exactly what i wanted so hopefully next season we'll have a little bit more money to work with and we'll be able to really improve the areas that we are weak in so we do begin this season with just under 43 million and in this transfer window we are focusing solely on buying a brand new center midfielder everywhere else can wait 
week for now. This is our top priority. And we have found our man. We have brought in Weston McKenney from Juventus for 31.4 million. Meanwhile, we have gone and sold Zach Steffen for 26.1 million. And obviously, we did need to bring in a replacement keeper for Zach Steffen. So we have gone and brought in Chesney from Juventus for a whopping 5 million. Just call me the master at business. We do have some money left over, but I really want to wait until January just to see where we need to improve upon. I've got a feeling it might be that right back position, but for now, I want to give him a chance, see if he can improve or not. But this is how we got the team lining up going into this season, and I must admit, I feel like this season, we are going to bag top four football and Champions League for next season. We bloody better do anyway. This team belongs in the Champions League. So we have arrived at the midway point this season to see Newcastle United top of the league. But as it stands, we are currently 5th in the league, but when you take a look at ourselves in 2nd place, there's only 4 points in it, so anything can happen in between now and the end of the season. And considering our right back just isn't cutting the mustard anymore, we have had to take action by bringing in Matty Cash from Juventus for 28 million. We have also gone and sold Ben Johnson for 11.8 million. And this is now the team that is going into the second half of the season. And I am praying to God that this team's good enough to qualify for Europe. I am sick and tired of coming so close, yet so freaking far to qualify. And this is the year we qualify for Europe. Oh my God, you guys can't even imagine how happy I am right now. Finally, we have finished in a position where we are in a European competition for next season. Finally, we are in the top four. And finally, we are in the Champions League next season. Come on! And we beat Spurs to second place. Don't you just love to see it? Meanwhile, it was Manchester City who won the FA Cup. Liverpool won the Carabao Cup. Real Betis won the Europa Conference League. Manchester United won the Europa League. And this time it was Barcelona who won the Champions League. Barry has finally broke the 20 goal barrier this year, gained himself 20 goals, 7 assists from 44 games. It's decent, but I still think he could do better. I think, honestly, looking back, I think maybe the issue is the formation. Maybe it's not attacking enough, so I might have to switch that up next season. Sula and Via gained themselves 15, 14 goals apiece. Fair play. Emre Chan, oh my god, 88 rated at 32 years old, 9 goals, 11 assists from the deepest position in the midfield. True, oh my god, get this guy. Get Get this guy if you haven't already, man. He is an absolute gold mine of a player. I think it's safe to say that this season is a massive win. Second in the Premier League, European competition next season, the Champions League as well. I think next season might be the genuine turning point for quality in this side. This season we begin with a whopping £83.84 million to spend. And obviously it's a little bit distracting the fact that half of them are on international duty, but this is the squad. I've got big plans in this transfer window with big money to spend and I know exactly who I'm going to get. And we begin this transfer window by making a massive sale in Sebastian Villa for £132.6 million. And we have found his replacement in Marcus Rashford from Manchester United and he only cost us in total £86 million. That's actually a madness in fairness. We've also just made the sale of Nicholas Tagliafico for 36.7 million and replacing Tagliafico we have brought in Renan Lodi away from Juventus for the region of 80 million pound and this is the team after that transfer window has come to a close I haven't quite been able to do what I want with the team just yet I brought some players in that I really wanted but not quite everybody but this is how the team is looking and I must admit this team is spectacular the additions of Rashford and Renan Lodi have definitely improved the team and it's just in time for the Champions League. And speaking of the Champions League, we are in Group B, joined by Bayern Munich, Club Bruges and FC Copenhagen. And if I'm going to be completely honest here, it should realistically be between ourselves and Bayern Munich who takes top spot. So as I predicted, it was ourselves and Bayern Munich in the top two and it was ourselves getting that top spot, 12 points, four points clear of Bayern Munich and we went undefeated in the entirety of the group stage. But now it's time to see who our under 16 opponent is. Who's he? Ooh, okay, boss. Owner. Okay, this may be our undoing. We could be crashing out pretty early in the Champions League. Barcelona have a tendency of having an insane team in the Champions League. In the Premier League, we are in the top six. We're two points behind fourth place Leicester City. It's looking pretty decent. I'd put odds on it. I would put pretty big money on us finishing top four in fairness. I'm very confident about it. So we do start this transfer window off by selling Fred for 22.7 million. We've also just sold Weston McKenney for 48.7 million. Are we? We have just got rid of Alan Varela for 13.8 million. 
I'm very predictable, I know, but let's be honest, we all saw this coming at some point. Of course, we were going to sign Declan Rice in this rebuild. He is 27 years old, 88 rated, and he cost us only 70 million. And let me tell you something, I am buzzing to get this guy in the team. He might be 32 years old, but this guy is absolutely world class in my opinion. Bernardo Silva, 88 rated, and he cost us 74.8 million. And after that transfer window, this is how we got the team lining up. There's literally not a single weakness in this side obviously Diop's 83 rated which could be considered a weakness but other than that this team is genuine I actually think we're going to win the Champions League with this team honest to god look at all the ratings on that team there is nothing but quality and our very first test is probably the biggest one we'll face Barcelona so this is the first time looking at Barcelona's team and as I said it is bloody incredible but the one thing I find absolutely bizarre about it is three out of the four of their back line are from Arsenal. Kieran Tierney, Ben White and Tommy Asu. What are Barcelona playing at buying them? But nevertheless, in the first leg, we are away from home at Barcelona's home ground. So if we can get a win there, that would be... poo. okay, okay, okay. Two all we go into the second leg. It's quite literally all to play for. Our genie in the Champions League could quite literally come crashing to an end this early in the competition. Round of 16, man. I, I'm not ready for it to be over. We've worked our backsides off to get into the top four to get ourselves into this competition. And I will be damned if we get knocked out by Barcelona in the round of 16. Please, thank God. Oh my God, thank God for that. We have beaten them 4-3 on aggregate, 2-1 on the night. Bernardo Silva and Sule, beautiful stuff from you boys. We are through to the quarters, thank God. God. And the best thing is, as well, if we're beating Barcelona, we can beat bloody anybody. No disrespect intended to Atalanta. I've rebuilt them. I like them, man. But we've just beaten Barcelona, and Barcelona's team is so much better than theirs is. So, realistically speaking, this should be ours to take home. Come on, there we go. 3 1 on the night. Sula by the looks of it, getting a brace. Farias joining him. Williams for Bergamo Calcio, aka Atalanta, does get them the goal. But I think this tie is pretty much done and dusted. This genuinely is ours to lose, man. A 3 1 up we are against Atalanta. That's a very good lead to go into this leg with. So, we're not going to talk a low. We're going to quick sim this game. 3 0. Beautiful stuff. I tell you what, if we can draw another team like Atalanta, I will legitimately be in dreamland. I definitely just jinxed myself, man. So, if I'm being honest, I don't think we've got too much to be nervous about. I mean, obviously, their team is very good, but it's not as good as it could be considering it's Bayern Munich. Their standout players definitely they've got likes of Alfonso Davies, Kimi, Komen Sane, but Galhart for Bayern Munich, really? Nevertheless, though, we are at home, so we are going to quick sim this game and hope to God we can gain advantage. Ooh, okay, okay. We go into the second leg with literally everything on the line. It all comes down to this. We could get knocked out right here, right now, and have to start this whole process all over again next season. If we are lucky enough to have successfully got ourselves in the top four anyways, or we could knock out the German Giants and book our place in the Champions League final. Let's hope for the latter. Come on, Bocca. Come on! <laughs> Come on, the boys! 41 aggregate, 3 1 on the night. Farias and Bernardo Silva get us them all important goals that get us through to that final. Oh, man, I'm so relieved. Bayern Munich are no joke, man. But the question is, who is the final opponent we have to face in the Champions League? So in the Champions League final this year, it is going to be AC Milan versus Boca Juniors. That should make for quite an interesting game. I've yet to actually look at their team. So me and you, we will be looking at it together when we go onto that final screen. But before we get into that, you guys know the drill. We're going to take a look at how we've done elsewhere this season before we get into the final. So in the Premier League, we were fortunate enough to get top four. In fairness, we weren't actually that fortunate. We were like six points clear of fifth place Wolverhampton Wanderers. We were unfortunate enough to finish three points behind the Spurs, but it is what it is. Manchester City are in a league of their freaking own, man. 91 points. They were like 16 points clear. of. They were 17 points clear of Tottenham Hotspur, and they were second place. I don't even want to do the match for us. Actually, it's right there. It's 20 points. What am I on about? Brighton of all teams won the FA Cup against Sheffield United in the final. 
what in God's name happened in this competition? We did also end up winning the Carabao Cup, beating West Ham 5-4 on penalties, so we could potentially win two trophies this season. Braga won the Europa Conference League, and Manchester City won the Europa League. This is what I'm talking about. Farias, 32 goals, 5 assists, 57 games. That is what I wanted from you since day one. Which is kind of unrealistic at the same time, but I don't really care. Marcus Rashford, 30 goals, 12 assists. That man has done freaking well this season. Jesus Christ. Matthias Schuler, 85 rated, 19 goals, 5 assists. Emre Chan. What can you say about this guy, man? Eight goals, 12 assists. Every single goddamn season we've had him, he has been in the goals and assists, even from the centre midfielder position. God, what a signing. Bernardo didn't do that well, in fairness. Six goals, eight assists from 50 games isn't something to be proud of, I must admit. For someone his quality, he should be at least in the double figures for both. So, our first observations of AC Milan. They've got a centre-back playing CDM. They've got a CDM playing centre-back, and that team is pretty much all over the place. I have a feeling in this game, our quality in the team is just going to outshine AC Milan in every single department. But that is enough talking. It is time to get into the game itself. It is AC Milan. This is Boca Juniors at Old Trafford in the Champions League final. Got Silva's on the ball. We've got Rashford now. Farias on the ball now. If we can take this around Miranda. Oh, for goodness sake. I'm Why is Miranda that quick? Come off it, lad. I'm going to be honest with you right now. We're 22 minutes in to this game, and it has been so freaking boring to play. But oh, for this is what I mean, man. I cannot do a single thing to AC Milan. And as soon as they get the ball, they just play around with it like Barcelona. Emre Can has found Declan Rice. Declan Rice, can we fight? Farias, Farias, can he spot Rashford? Rashford to Rice. Rice is completely... Oh, my God, how has he kept that ball? He's done brilliant there. Shula on his left foot, please. Oh, my days. That is a cracking effort, though. Bernardo Silva is on the ball. I'll tell you what, we're going to have a pop. We're going to... Oh, my God, what a save from... Mate, that was going top right bins all day of the week. Jesus, what a save. Sula. Good ball in, lad. Come on. Rashford, get your noggin on that. Fair enough. It gets... We've got the ball to Shula on the left-hand side of the pitch. Emre Chan finds Renan Lodi. Can Lodi find Rashford making that run? Rashford has found Farias. Farias, I tell you what, he's completely surrounded the guys, but he's found some space. My man again! Jesus Christ! He is single-handedly keeping AC Milan in this game. He's having a Courtois-esque kind of game. Matty Cash is on the ball. Matty Cash, can we find... Oh, that's a lovely little touch over to Shula. Shula, I don't know what we're going to do here. Oh, oh, we've done him there. Fair play. Emre Chan, back to Cash. Cash into Farias. Farias, first time shot. It gets blocked. And I believe that does take us way past extra time. And that does conclude that half. And it is a nil-nil going into the half-time break. More of that, as sooner or later, we will break AC Milan down. It's just a matter of time before we find that special moment. We've got it to Matty Cash. What can we do with it here? Anybody making any movement? Well, oh my God, there's no movement at all. They're all just static. Come on, man, make a bit of movement. There we go. Declan Rice. Oh my Lord Almighty. What in God's carnation was that? Farias. Oh, Farias with the beautiful touch. It's got to be. Got to be. Thank God. God for that. We have finally broken the deadlock at 53 minutes into this game, courtesy of a Farias goal. In fairness, it was Declan Rice who got the ball back, and that that turn from bloody Farias is absolutely beautiful. Right foot, near post, never in a million years is my man getting that. I told you guys, if we kept playing how we were, we would find a way to break the deadlock, and we have done already in the second half. Oh my God, what a ball from Renan Lodi. 
from one side of the pitch to the other. We've got Sula against Orlando. Sula is going to take this all the way. Farius, oh my god, oh, it went a little bit too far. I wanted that to Farius. He was in a prime position there. We did get to Bernardo Silva and his shot got blocked though. Considering there's only 15 minutes left in this game, AC Milan haven't got an ounce of urgency in their gameplay. Honest to god, they are playing like they're in the lead in fairness. Like, look at them. They're just playing around with it. They're not even trying to attack. Sula is on the ball. If we can find this ball. Oh, surely to god this is it game over 2-0 courtesy of a brace from farius what a finish we have officially made Boca juniors european champion surely to god at this point that was a beautiful ball to farius and farius was never missing from there man absolute perfection i reckon we can nab one more goal just before this game finishes i reckon i've got a lot of money on that i've got money on it that we can nab one more goal just before this game finishes look at how they're playing now Oh my god, we could get Farris's hat trick here. Oh my god, nobody's pressed him. Oh my man! My man! Jesus, what a save. Sula, good ball in. Let's for oh, that's all Rashford. That oh no. Come on. Sula is away. Sula, back post. Come on. Nobody's there. AC Milan have broken us down pretty nicely. That oh! Oh, hang on. Ah! How the hell did they not score that? Oh my god. The defending there was absolutely beautiful. Matty Cash, take a bow, lad. This has surely got to be it. Sula is on the ball. Yep, there it is. We have officially done the job we set out to do at the start of this rebuild. We have completed the mission in making Boca Juniors the best team in the world. And we have done it in the name of Tevez, who has retired after this season. We've built a team based around his career, based on who he's played for in his career. So I'm actually kind of happy with the outcome. If you guys want to see more videos a little bit like this, be sure to leave a like on this video. Smash the hell out of that subscribe button if you are new around here. Turn that notification bell and so you never miss a video that I upload. At the time of recording this video, we just hit 4,000 subscribers. So thank you so goddamn much. We are now officially on the road to 5,000 subscribers. That is all from me, guys. It has been your boy Gordon. Hope you guys have an amazing afternoon. And until next time, I'll see you later.